Hey everyone, and welcome back to the fourth part of our Pokedex React Matil UI series. In the last couple of videos, we pretty much created the entire layout, we hooked it up with mock data, and we made the functionality so when I click on one of these Pokemon here, it will pretty much bring us to the page where we can see all about it. As you can see, there's not too much missing uh, from the actual application. The only things left to do is actually adding the correct API request and getting rid of the mock data implementation so that we are able to get all the Pokemon. And in the last video, which will be the next video, um, setting up this search bar so that I can type in something like B-U-L and all the Pokemon with B-U-L in the name uh, will be clickable. So. Um, and once again, if you found va value in this series and these videos, please consider liking and subscribing. I know I feel like I'm saying it so much, but it really, I can't express enough how much it helps with the channel, especially with the YouTube algorithm being the way it is. Uh, and thank you everyone uh, who has been commenting um, really, really nice things and giving me a lot of feedback. It really makes a difference. Um, so let's jump straight into replacing some of this uh, code over here with the real API. So let's close all our files just to make it a bit more um, clean. And first, let's look at the Pokedex. Um, so if we go over to this Pokedex, whoops, let's go over to our just straight Pokedex page. We can see here we're only displaying seven Pokemon right now because that's pretty much all we have in our mock data. Now we are going to be hitting an API that is going to give us all the information for all the Pokemon. So um, we will have a big scroll of every single Pokemon that pretty much exists all the way down to the newest generations. As you can see down here, I feel like the names keep getting weirder and weirder and they just look weirder and weirder. I feel like they're running out of animals and stuff like that to model after, but whatever. Um, so anyways, the first thing we're going to want to do is you can see here our initial Pokemon data state uh, for this state variable is pretty much being set to mock data. Um, in this case, we actually uh, want it to just be set to an empty map at the beginning before anything is gotten. You'll see as, as soon as I set that, we're probably going to get an error or nothing's going to display. Um, but not to worry, we're going to actually make the API request now. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to import Axios, um, which is going to be the uh, library we're using to make the actual API request. Um, and it's worth noting that there are a lot of different ways to do this. A lot of applications, if you're building up big uh, applications, will have your own backend and you'll be using actual state uh, state management libraries like Redux. Um, and on top of Redux, you could use Redux Thunk to actually make the API request. But because this is a very simple application, I'm mostly just trying to showcase how to use React and Material UI. We're just going to be using use effects and um, Axios inside of the use effects because we don't have any like global state management. Um, so this isn't traditionally what you would do for like a large enterprise application or anything like that, but it still works nonetheless. So if you're not familiar with use effects, um, that is what we are going to be using. And essentially all we're doing for the use effect is we are having the use effect run on the component did mount, which is essentially the first time that the component loads on the page. Um, so we can uh, set up our use effect. Um, we don't have any return, we don't have any cleanup, and our input for this use effect will just be an empty array. Um, and we can also import it from React. So use effect. When you have an empty array, it denotes to use effect that it is essentially just being uh, used as a component in mount. The next thing we are going to want to do is we are going to want to start setting up our Axios request. So I'm going to have our Axios request. So you can see here um, we're passing an Axios, um, or we're calling Axios, and then we're doing dot get on Axios, which uh, denotes that we're doing a get request. This is the API URL that we are using. We're setting a little limit here. Um, so it doesn't get too many Pokemon. And after this, we pretty much want a dot then function where we can denote what we want to do with the data that we have gotten, essentially. Um, all we're going to want to do here, first of all, is we're going to want to destructure uh, pretty much two things. Number one, we want to get the data from the response. And number two, we want to get the results from the data. This is sort of dependent on how they structure their API. Everything is stored inside results, which is inside a data object, which comes natively inside response from any API request you make. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're pretty much want to want to um, set up a just a temporary uh, object to hold our new Pokemon data. And we're not just going to pass in all the data they give us because they give us way too much data. If I go back to the API and I zoom in a bit, you'll see here there's tons and tons and tons of data for every Pokemon. Um, and some of this, like, for example, like a lot of this is even like, um, uh, not even like opened up all the way it could be, but we're not looking to store all of that data. All we really want are, uh, especially for this page, are very specific things. Number one, um, 
the only things that we're really using, number one, is the ID of the Pokemon. Uh, and then after the ID of the Pokemon, we just need the name of the Pokemon and then a, an image to their sprite. So just the ID, oops, just the ID, their name, and then an image to the sprite. So I'm going to pretty much just write a little wrapper that's going to pull that out of these results and place them in our new Pokemon data. So I'm going to do results dot for each. The reason we're not using map is because whoops, because when you use map, you are um, you have to return something. But in this case, I don't want to return anything. I just want to add something. I just want to add the new properties to an array up here or uh, to an object up there. Then um, pretty much uh, we're going to get the Pokemon and then the index from here of the um, uh, of our loop. Um, and then in here, we're going to say this. We're going to say new Pokemon data of index plus one because this index is going to start from zero, but Pokemon IDs start from one. So that's why you're seeing the plus one here. It's just going to be equal to an object where the ID is in equal to index plus one, where the name is just equal to that Pokemon object that name. And their sprite link, just like we saw down here, is just going to essentially be uh, pretty much the same thing. Um, we're going to replace that here. Like that. Whoops. Um, so the sprite link is just going to be the index plus one. Now, all of that data is going to essentially be stored in this new uh, Pokemon data object. And then after all of this is done, right at the very end, um, we can go ahead over here and, s and use our um, finally use our state hook and set the Pokemon data in our application equal to that new Pokemon data. So it'll overwrite this empty map with that. And I can go ahead and now get rid of this old sprite from here. I can destructure sprite from here now that's coming from the real data. And like I talked about in the last video, the Pokemon ID is now gonna be an integer. So uh, instead of what it was as a string in the mock data, so I can save that. And let's go ahead and see what goes on. And there you go. Now in our application, we are getting all the Pokemon up to 807. I wonder if 807 is actually the limit. Let's see how far we can go. If I put like, for example, a thousand, are there more than just Zerora or whatever? Uh, let's go all the way to, oh uh, yeah, there's up to 964. Oh, and it looks like the new, okay, right. I remember why I did this is because the newer generation ones for this API don't have their sprites updated. It only goes up to 807, which is why I limited it to 807 in the first place um, because the images aren't updated for the, from the API itself. So that's pretty much all we're doing for replacing the data on this component. Now let's talk about replacing the data on the next component because this one's a bit more complicated. So let's go to Pokemon.js. Let's go ahead and um, keep it open. Uh, so over here for this use state now, we can get rid of just passing straight up um, uh, the mock data here. In fact, we can get rid of mock data altogether. Let's start this off as undefined. And we want a couple of things to happen here. If the, we pass in an invalid ID, we pretty much want to show something that says, you know, Pokemon not found. Um, and we also, uh, would then want, um, in addition to that, we also want it to show a circular loading progress bar when it's getting um, the API. So that means if you're keeping track of it, there's actually three states of this component. And I'll type them out so it's easier to understand. The first state is when um, the Pokemon data is equal to undefined. And that means we're getting the info. And in that case, we essentially want to just return a circular a loading progress bar. The second state is if Pokemon equals good data. That means we've gotten the info. And what we want to return here is essentially just um, the actual information. So pretty much this generate Pokemon uh, JSX. And the third state here is if Pokemon is equal to bad data slash false. And this will happen when we make the API request, but we get nothing back because someone passed in an invalid ID, like Pokemon, like, you know, instead of slash one for the Pokemon ID, like slash blah, 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 like a big number. And in that case, we want to return Pokemon not found. 
So in each case is for this. Um, in the first case, Pokemon's going to be equal to undefined. The second case, Pokemon's going to be equal to real data. And the third case, Pokemon is just going to be equal to false. And we can conditionally render um, all of that ourselves. So let's go down. And that's why I wanted to keep this code separate, because you'll see how clean it looks when we put everything inside of here. So let's map out our cases. Um, oops, let's map out. There we go. And let's put some brackets around here. OK. so. Here is what each case is going to look like. In the first case, if Pokemon data is undefined, which means we haven't gotten it yet, we're going to want to display circular progress, which is the material UI loading bar. In the second case, if Pokemon data is not undefined and it's true, which is sort of a redundant check, um, I think you can even do, do double bangs and that'll check if it's undefined and um, if it's that. But I left it like this just so it's easier to see the states. Um, then we want to actually uh, generate the Pokemon JSX. We don't have to pass anything in there. In the third state, if it's false, we want to display pretty much typography that just says Pokemon not found. And then finally, if we want, we can uh, import button from Material UI as well. And we can have this nifty little back to Pokedex, um, this nifty little back to Pokedex functionality here. If it's not undefined, uh, we'll, we'll have a little back to Pokedex um, button. And that will uh, give us an easy way to just get back to our main page. So it's a lot more uh, convenient. And in order to do that, we're just going to also, instead of just having match here, we're going to also import history um, from props as well. And so now if we come here and click on one of these guys, we'll see here that right now it's infinitely loading because we haven't actually done anything uh, with this state yet. Um, so we can go ahead and now do the final part of this, which is to actually make the use effect that's going to get it. And you'll see that it's a lot simpler uh, than the use effect for the last one. So I'm going to import Axios. We're going to go ahead and create our use effect. Oopsies. Now inside of our use effect, we're going to do the same thing we did here, which is Axios.get, the URL, for the specific Pokemon uh, data and then the Pokemon ID. We're going to have a dot then, and what that dot then is going to do is we're essentially going to take the data from that response and just set it equal. We're going to set our state equal to Pokemon, which is where this set Pokemon is coming from. And then if there's an error, aka if the Pokemon is not found, we're going to set this to false, so it triggers our third state. And finally, um, as part of our use effect, we're going to add our array here. And since Pokemon ID is being used in here, we're going to get a React. React is going to yell at us for not um, passing in Pokemon ID as a dependency. But essentially, Pokemon ID is not going to be changing unless the whole page changes. Um, but yeah, and there we go. Now we have all our data loading properly. If I were to refresh the page, you can't really see it because it loads so fast, but a loading, a little circular loading bar happens when it's trying to get it. Maybe if I go to like 809 or something like that, you um, you saw the like little loading bar. And you can see here that it doesn't find this Pokemon. If I go to like some random URL, you'll see that it's trying to find it. Oh, but it couldn't find it. But if I go to, for example, 675, um, it's Pangoro, whatever that guy is. Um, but yeah. And that is pretty much what we have done. We have hooked up uh, an API to our Pokedex. And now everything is looking fine. And all that is left to do uh, is just essentially hook it up. Whoops. All that is left to do is pretty much just get the top bar up there working. Um, so the, in the next video, we're pretty much going to add this top bar. And we're going to make it so that we can just easily filter. For example, if I wanted to find something with war in their name, it would be just war turtle, I guess. But it, what about like, you know, char, C-H-A? A lot of things have CHA in their name. Um, so we're going to learn how to do that and add that to the header. Um, so yeah, if you found value in this video, once again, please uh, remember to subscribe, uh, like, or comment on the video with what you'd like to see next. And once again, I hope you're all staying safe. And thanks so much for watching.